The cupola furnace is one of the melting devices, used mainly for the manufacture of different grades of bronze and cast iron in foundry processes. The overall shape is cylindrical, and the equipment is arranged vertically, usually supported by four legs. The cupola furnace was first built in China, during the period of the Warring State, 403 to 221 BC. A modern cupola furnace was made by French scientist and entomologist René Antoine Fersholt de Riomur around 1720. Welcome to James Sword Research Channel. In this video, we shall be discussing the various parts of the cupola furnace, the working principle, the various reactions that occur during melting process, the advantages and disadvantages. Do well to watch the video till the end, kindly support the channel to grow by subscribing to it if you're new here, and also turn on notification for new uploads. Various parts of a cupola furnace. The outermost part of the cupola furnace is a cylindrical steel shell. The diameter of this shell ranges from 1.5 to 13 feet, depending on the furnace size. They are lined with an inner edges of furnace refractory brick and plastic refractory patch material. The furnace is supported on cast iron legs mounted on a concrete base. Slag hole or slag sprout. Near the higher part of the tapered sand bed is the slag hole through which the slag made of impurities comes out. Sand bed. This is in taper form and from this, the molten iron comes out. Two years. Above the sand bed exists the two years, through which air enters the furnace and helps in combustion. Preheating zone. The heating process starts at this zone and heat the metal charge to a temperature about 1900 degrees Celsius. Melting zone. At this zone, the metal is melted into the molten form and ready to be discharged. Charging door. This is where the metal, coke, and limestones are fed into the furnace. Spark arrester. Used to prevent the emission from the fireplace. Cupola furnace working principles. The cupola furnace works on a simple principles, that combustion of coke generates carbon dioxide and heat, and this causes the iron to melt. The iron drains downward when melted. The wood is first ignited over a bed of sand. When the wood starts burning properly, the coke is thrown from the top of the furnace to a predetermined height of about 40 inches. This makes a 40-inch coke bed. Then the combustion begins in the coke bed. After the coke bed is properly ignited, alternating layers of limestone, pig iron, and coke are charged until it reaches the level of the charging door. Then the air blast is turned on at normal blowing rate and combustion occurs more rapidly in the coke bed. All the oxygen from the air blast is consumed by combustion in the combustion zone. The chemical reaction that occurs in this zone is, it is an exothermic reaction, and the temperature in the combustion zone varies from 1150 to 1850 degrees Celsius. The portion of the coke bed above the combustion zone is a reducing zone. This region prevents oxidation of the metal charge while leaving it over and through. As the hot carbon dioxide gas moves up through this region, some of it is reduced by the reaction. The zone of dilution of iron above the reducing zone is a melting zone where solid iron is converted into molten iron. This molten iron falls down through the coke bed and collects in the well. In this region, sufficient carbon compacts are extracted by the molten metal and are characterized by the reaction. In addition to limestone, fluor spar and soda ash are also used as flux materials. The main function of the flux is to remove impurities from the iron and protect the iron from oxidation. For normal blast rates, the first molten iron appears in the tap hole within 5 to 10 minutes after the start of the air blast. The charging door remains closed until the metal melts. The content of the charge goes down as the melting proceeds. When the melting process is over and no more molten irons are required, the charge feeders stop and the air blast also stops. Advantages of cupola furnace simple in construction a wide range of material can be melted less floor space is required it can easily be operated by low skilled people low cost of operation maintenance and construction disadvantages of cupola furnace it is difficult to control the temperature in this furnace metal elements are converted to their oxide which is not suitable for casting 